Hello, and welcome to London Pinball. Hey, it's Corey once again, and today I wanted to talk to you about a problem I've got with this Williams Algar that I've been working on. Um, <clears throat> and as you can see, we've got displays all working and looking pretty good, except players two and four here are missing the tens digit and the thousands digit. Um, now, I'm pretty sure that this is a display driver problem right off the bat, but um, I've swapped the digit the displays around, and the same problem happens when you know if you put the third player uh, display into the second player slot or whatever. So I know that it's not a display problem itself. Um, I know also that this isn't a motherboard problem because. Um, when I first started, got when I first got this game and was trying to get it to work, I actually pulled the uh, motherboard out of another game and tested it in here, and uh, the problem remained even with a different motherboard. So um, I'm going to show you what I've done to test this um, display driver here and come to the real and what has caused me to realize that that is in fact the problem. So I'm going to show you how I tested the. Um, how I tested the display driver, um, how I determined what chip is the problem, and um, I'm going to swap out the chip and I'm going to show you that the problem is fixed. Here I've got the schematic. It's a Black Knight schematic, but the because um, I can't find the Elgar schematics online, so I'm using uh, something that'll work um, because the d display driver is the uh, is the same. So I've got the display driver schematic here, and you can see uh, these are the chips on the on the right side of that board. You've got IC9, IC10, and IC11. So I know from looking at this part of the schematic, you can see that it refers to uh, the tens digit and the one hundreds and pardon me and the ten thousands digits on players two and four as strobes um, uh, 15 and 12. So I know that strobes 15 and 12 are a problem here um, and it says it right here. So and I know also that those two strobes are both related to display or players two and four displays. So if I scroll down here you can see the nitty-gritty of the uh, of the schematic and you'll see right in the top corner here Right here, you can see strobe 15 comes into the board and goes to chip IC9 at pin 3 and out at pin 4. And 15, or pardon me, and 12 comes in at pin 11 and goes out at pin 10. So I'm going to show you right now how to check those pins and see what they're doing. Uh, my guess is that the the input will be fine, the output will not be fine. We'll check that right now. Alrighty, so now that we've determined the um, potential culprit in this situation uh, is this chip right here, that's IC9, um, I'm going to test the inputs and outputs that I believe to be involved, um, having looked at the schematic. And the way I'm going to do that is with this pocket oscilloscope here that I purchased on eBay about five, six years ago for around a hundred bucks. Uh, I just checked again and they are still available for around the same price or actually it's closer to 115, 120 right now, which would make it about 80 bucks US. Uh, they're really handy to have. They work in much the same way as a uh, as a, a logic probe, but it gives you a, a little bit more of a, of a display uh, for seeing exactly what's happening. You know, if you're looking for a pulsing signal, this will show you exactly that. It'll show you, you know, a square wave or not. Uh, and so in this case we're looking for um, a square wave coming in and going out of this chip. Um, and I'm going to show you right now the lead. This is the lead that comes with the device. And I've got that extended. Uh, I've got the, the ground extended here. It's hard to see. Hang on. Uh, 
extended with a an alligator clip and I've got that clipped down to the ground strap inside the cabinet here right there and so I'm going to test the pins in question and uh, show you what I get. So I'll show you a, a signal that's working fine both in and out first and we'll compare that to the signals that uh, I believe to not be working fine. Strobe 13 is on is coming into the chip at pin 9 and then it leaves the chip at pin 8. So let me see if I can get this to work so that you can see it. So pin 8 is right here. This is a the what would what you would see on a good input. That's a nice square wave there. And then on the output of that is you'll see the same sort of signal. And so uh, the two strobes that are causing the problem here are strobes 12 and 15. And strobe 15 comes into the board here at pin 4, which is right here. 1, 2, 3, 4. And, oh, pardon me. Comes into the board at pin 3. And that's a good signal. And on the way out, it goes through pin 4. And you can see I have no signal there at all. Uh, certainly not the kind of signal that I'm looking for. And then on the other side, strobe 12 goes into the board at pin 11 and out at pin 10. So I've got pin 8, 9, 10, 11. This is the input. And you can see that's a nice square wave. And then the output is the previous pin. And again, you can see that that's just not doing what I want it to do at all. So I'm positive that this chip here is the problem. I'm going to replace that chip. Uh, I'm going to put a socket on there uh, and, a, and a nice new chip that I've just purchased. And we'll come back and see how it looks. Alrighty, here's the chip that we're dealing with here. I'm going to clip it off the board with these uh, really nifty um, uh, very low clearance um, clippers. I've also got my solder sucker, a couple of different kinds of solder suckers. I also have this solder sucker which is honestly uh, the best one I've ever had. Uh, it's the AU B1002A um, and it is part of the INT701A++ soldering and desoldering station. It works really, really well, and I recommend it, but if you're not doing a lot of desoldering, uh, then one of these tools will certainly do the job for you with no trouble. Um, I'll use one of these for now and um, show you how that works. First, I'm going to clip the chip from the board. Now, some people love to try to save these chips. Uh, when you're dealing with a Williams board, all I can tell you is uh, good luck. Um, the the boards are or getting the chips off the board can be really challenging um, in a way that protects the chips and makes them usable again or at least testable um, so I'm not even gonna bother so once I've got the chip cut from the board then you can just desolder these guys and uh, pull them from the board one by one If you can see light through each of those holes, then you've done what you needed to do. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a socket strip here, a, a, a single inline pin socket. Some people don't like these. I do. 
you just measure it what you, the number of pins you need and break it off and uh, you're good to go. Looks good. So the chip in the uh, schematic is identified as a 4069. I've got here a uh, 4069 that I picked up today at the electronics store locally. Uh, these are available on uh, Great Plains Electronics um, as well as DG Key, uh, Newark, and I'm sure a plethora of other electronics online retailers. I'm just going to pop that right into that new socket right here. Right like that. Good as new. All right, let's rock and roll. All right, I'm going to pop this board back in here and uh, test it out and see how it goes. You're going to see it with me for the first time. You're going to, it's go, I'm, I haven't tried this, I haven't done this before. I haven't turned it on yet. You're going to see what I see. All right, we're back in. The moment of truth. I'm gonna turn it on, and we'll see if we've got all seven digits. Ba ba ba. Oh, forgot the last one. Ba ba ba. Looking good. Alrighty, I hope you found this helpful. When I was starting out in pinball repair, I had no idea about, um, you know, how, how to desolder a chip, how to identify which chip was the problem, how to use an oscilloscope or a logic probe, uh, how to solder, how to desolder. Um, I didn't know anything about anything. Uh, and trust me, if I can do it, you can do it too. It's taken a long time for me to um, get to this point, but it doesn't have to. There's a lot of really great information out there on the internet, and uh, hopefully videos like this uh, help you along the way. Again, I'm Corey. Have a wonderful day.